Okay, welcome back to, back to my vlog. I have been out of town for the last few weeks, so I haven't done an update, but uh, welcome to my 14th episode of Waking Up Gray of Fly Forward, the vlog. I'm here in my studio, and uh, if you remember back a few episodes ago, I was feeling a little discouraged because I've been trying to apply to different art galleries and I'm getting nowhere. So I decided to stop, step back, regroup, and look at what the feedback I was getting and decide what to do from there. So I spent some time caring for myself and trying to decide what the next moves were. So in caring for myself and evaluating what was there, the feedback I was getting was I'm primarily an oil painter and I paint the human figure, but I was getting a lot of rejections with that. Uh, most galleries say they can't sell those pieces. So, I began to, I took a break, got back on my feet, and decided I was going to start in again, but maybe take it from a different angle. So, I began to apply to galleries with my encaustic work instead of my oil painting. And almost immediately, I procured a uh, gallery contract from a gallery in Lexington, Kentucky. So one of my trips recently was up there to deliver some artwork. So all that to say, my inventory is really low and so now I am in the studio creating some new work. So I thought I'd let you come, come in and take a look at this. I'm gonna show you how to do an image transfer into the encaustic wax today. But I just wanted to share that with you because I think it's really important sometimes to step back, take a breath, evaluate, take inventory, and decide what to do next. If what you're doing isn't working, perhaps there's a reason, perhaps there's a next step, perhaps there's a change, perhaps there's some new inspiration, some new challenges ahead that might look different from the challenges that you've had in the past. So, all that to say, I'm kind of going in a new direction. But, I wanted to show you how to do an image transfer as kind of a teaser because I am offering an encaustic workshop here in my home studio. I will be, um, it's a weekend workshop. It's Saturday, November 4th from 10 to 5, and then on Sunday from 1 to 5, November 5th. You can go to my website at flyforward.org to register and let me know you're coming. The cost is $160. I provide all the materials, the direction, and we just play in the hot wax and have fun. So, and you can learn some new skills and set up in your own home to, to do the encaustic medium. So right now I have, I have prepared an image transfer. And when I say image transfer, I mean we're literally transferring an image into the wax. So I'm going to transfer the ink that is on this image into the wax on here and remove the paper pulp. So there are several things that you need. You need friction, heat, and water. So what I've done, and the more that you can cut, because what you're doing is transferring the ink onto the wax. So the more paper pulp you can get rid of, the easier the process is. So I have cut very closely around this. See this image? This is a place that is very dear and very near to me. It is, I actually got it from the, the bulletin from St. Paul's Episcopal Church in downtown Franklin. I went to their Easter vigil service and I kept the bulletin because that service was so beautiful and so important to me that I knew I wanted to somehow incorporate some of that experience into a piece of art. So that's what this is. I've cut very closely around it to try to get rid of as much of the paper as I can. Any of the white background of the paper is going to disappear. So anything white 
is going to disappear into the wax. Anything with ink in it is going to st stay forward in the wax. So the more you can cut of the white paper, the easier. The other thing that you need to do, this is the, the board. I've been working on this board. If you know anything about how I work with encaustic, it's that I, I work on several panels at one time. So I started this a few weeks ago and I started it, I glued some fabric down. This is an old piece of vintage fa fabric from one of my daughter's bedspreads. Um, I made her a duvet cover. I made them matching duvet covers when they were little. They had bunk beds. And I fell in love with this fabric and I bought it and I made two matching bedspreads and they don't use them anymore and we were just gonna throw them out but I still love the fabric so I cut the fabric out and kept it and it's showing up here so that's the bottom layer and then I painted if you can see my griddle right here I've got all kinds of I have to hold this up because Wow, look at this. Ow, that hurts. <laughs> That's hot. Okay, so if you can see the griddle, I've got paint all over it because I was painting that background. And it's absolutely, it's creating this beautiful pattern on the griddle. And I want to capture that. So I've actually got this piece of, I think this is watercolor paper. It's pretty thick. It's, it's porous. Any kind of paper, uh, like watercolor paper, multimedia paper, rice paper, um, any kind of thicker paper, you can make mono prints of your things that are happening. Sometimes on the griddle, these beautiful formations happen, these patterns, these swirly patterns from the pigment, the wax pigment creates these beautiful patterns and you can pick them up on really porous paper. So I'm going to do that. And then you can use this paper on a later piece. Um, oh, this is really beautiful. So I'm just laying this paper straight down on the griddle and just letting it absorb some of that wax. And I should have a little Tool, but and I do but I don't know where it is so I'm just using my fingers and I might say a couple swear words because ow this is hot <laughs> okay so I'm picking up this paper if I can get it <laughs> okay there we go and then it creates this I just created some kind of galaxy or something so I can use this somehow it'll show up somewhere else on another piece of artwork yay okay actually you know what there's some yellow happening here I'm gonna pick that up a little bit on these So yeah, that creates another uh, collage element is what it creates. Okay, there we go. So now back to this image transfer. So one thing you need to do if you're going to practice this at home is make sure that the surface that you're going to transfer the ink on is very smooth. So you didn't see this, I prepared the surface. I put a layer of wax over top of the paint and then fused it with my heat gun and then scraped it back. So if you feel it, like there aren't any divots, there aren't any raised areas, it's very smooth. So that, that, that ink is gonna transfer really well. So in addition to cutting out all the white areas on this, on this image, I've also sanded the back of it lightly. If you can break up the paper pulp before you ever apply heat or water, uh, it's just gonna help that paper pulp go away. 
So always keep in mind, if you're doing an image transfer and it's got text in it, it's gonna show up backwards, okay? So you would, if you wanna do text, you have to get a copy of the text, but it's gotta be in the mirror image. So when you look at it, it's not gonna make any sense, but when you transfer it, it's gonna be right. So I'm just gonna place this down where I want it. I'm gonna build a tree on here on top of this. So this is just one, this is just one element in a series of elements. So I like to keep that in mind whenever I'm placing it, that I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna put a tree on this as well. There are trees in the image that I'd kind of like to extend out and make it just surrounded by trees. I love trees, I just love trees. So, okay. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand it. That helps further break up the paper pulp and it helps kind of burnish it into the, into the wax surface. And then I'm gonna take parchment paper. Parchment paper is a must if you're gonna do encaustic. And I'm gonna take this, it's a clay tool but for me, it's a burnisher. And I'm gonna burnish that paper into the this, this surface. The more you can spend time on the front end just getting that ink into the wax by burnishing it, sanding it, putting it into the wax, because that's where it's gonna live. special attention to the edges because that's those are places where we don't pay attention to when they're trouble spots. Somehow I got wax on the top of this paper. I must have burnished it in. It must have been on the parchment paper. Hit it again with some sandpaper. And then I'm going to take this sponge and saturate it with water. Saturated. Okay, so I've got water here. This sponge comes in a, a tool, a pottery tool kit that you can get at like Michaels or Hobby Lobby in the clay section. And I'm just gonna. Water cannot hurt 